We're joined today by Luke Cox, CEO of Green Technology Metals. Luke, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. Rapidly advancing a high quality lithium project in Ontario, Canada. Why Ontario and why is this project so compelling? Yeah, so in Ontario, what they're trying to build is a complete EV supply chain. So they've already started to build the EV cars. They're building the batteries in Ontario. They're, they're mixing the chemicals. They're, everything's happening right now in the downstream. But what they don't have is a steady supply of lithium into that supply stream. So that's where GT1 comes in. What we're doing, we've been exploring, we've proven up 25 million tonnes. You know, we're now developing you know, into mines so we can supply into our supply chain and really complete it. Uh, and that's what the government's looking for also. In terms of government support, both at a provincial and country level, what does it look like and how important is it to the development of this project? Oh, absolutely. So, you know, with the mining concentrator on site, that's something that GT1 will do. But when you start talking about lithium conversion, that's a big ticket item. And that's where the government come in. They've been quite specific about what they want to do. And they've realised to close this supply chain, they need a converter, if not one or two, in Ontario. So we're looking to earmark one in Thunder Bay. And they've actually put funds aside. It's called the Strategic Innovation Fund. And there's money there to go into that conversion facility. So it won't just be GT1. There'll be a strategic partner, someone that's done this before. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. And also the government will come in with some significant uh, funding as well for this project. So really that, that closes up the supply. And you're about to release a key report, essentially a scoping study into the project. How important is it? And what do you expect it to tell you? Yeah, absolutely. So what we're doing is called a preliminary economic assessment. That's what you provide over in Canada. In Australia, you call it a scoping study. Uh, essentially, it gives you the economics of the project. What's GT1 worth? What are we trying to achieve? So it's really, there's going to be two components to this. What would GT1 look like with just mines and concentrators? So creating a, a spodumene concentrate, and what would the MPV look like? Now, what you do, you tap on the back end of that, a converter, and that's where you, know, you really hit, hit the road hard. Right, and you see a significant increase in the MPV and what we're trying to achieve in, in Ontario. So a two-stage, I guess, a scoping study to give you both scenarios. But what we are doing, trying to do is a vertical integration. So that's, you know, explore, create the mines, create the concentrates that will go into the lithium conversion plant and create chemicals that will then go down to the downstream players that are already building their plants in Ontario and they're screaming out for supply uh, and finishing that supply chain. And you've recently announced test results, which give great confidence to the processing that you're looking to do. Tell us about the results and why they're so important. Yeah, so, it's, so one thing is the results. So what we did, we, we took a, a bulk sample from site. We then processed that through dense media separation. Uh, and this isn't a laboratory, so, so you know, these are, these are the, the initial results that you get. But we got over 70% recovery, so we know the ore we got can go through dense media separation. But also the grade, the grade was very high, above 6%. But it's not just grade, when you look at the, 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 the concentrates you're trying to produce, you've got to make sure the deleter deleterious elements are low as well, so that's iron. So we had less than 0.6% iron, so that's way above what the market requires, so it's good quality material that we can create through dense media separation at our flagship, which is called Seymour. And then there'll be uh, additional test work that we're doing right now. So this is where we do the conversion test work. So we've got FLS, they're, they're testing all of our ores right now. And that's how, where you start to look at the conversion of concentrates into lithium chemicals like carbonate and hydroxide. So big news coming down the pipeline, but yeah, watch this space for uh, next couple of weeks for our uh, PEA. Uh, and you can really see what GT1's trying to achieve and, and the, the real value of the project uh, and, and this long-term supply chain. So just not for the next five years, this is the ne next 50 years we're looking at. So looking forward, six, 12 months, what does 2024 into 2025 look like? Yeah, so that's uh, early works on site at Seymour. You know, you, we're already engaging with the First Nations there, so you start talking about uh, impact benefit agreements, um, and also there's the community up there. So it's you start talking about jobs, you start talking about what, what, what this will do for the community in terms of long-term growth for everyone. And there's schooling, there's everything up there. So, you know, we, we're not in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we're, we're quite close to a community. They've got school, police, shops, uh, so, you know, airport. So everything's already there. So what we're doing, we're, you know, we're looking to build an operation 
but we've been a stone's throw of a community and a stone's throw from Thunder Bay as well, where we're looking to put a conversion city. So we're not shipping materials across Canada or even across the world. This is all local, all made in Ontario. This is a made in Ontario theme, and that's exactly what the government wants to see, and that's what we're trying to achieve. Clear focus on production, strong local support, and a tier one project. Exciting times ahead for GT1 and its shareholders. Luke, thanks for your time. Thank you.